let's take a look at Cargo really quick. And Cargo is the Rust programming languages build system and package manager. And if you're going to be developing in Rust, this is a tool that you can use to kind of help you run and manage your projects. Cargo is going to be able to help you do a lot of different things for your projects. It's going to help build your code. It's going to help you with downloading libraries and dependencies that your projects might need or require or that you're going to use. And if you guys remember back when I was showing you all how to install Rust on your machine, I told you guys there was two separate ways to install Rust. The first way was I just suggested that if you're going to be maybe just running maybe like some kind of Rust software and you might need the Rust compiler, then you could just download Rust. But I had suggested if you guys are going to be developing in Rust to go ahead and download Rust up. Well, if you did download Rust up, you should have Cargo already installed in your machine. But if you want to take a look and make sure that you have Cargo in your machine, let me show you guys how to do that really quick. So go ahead and navigate back to your terminal where you guys are at. And if you just type in Cargo, C-A-R-G-O, space dash dash version v e r s i o n and type enter you guys should get some sort of version number right after the word cargo if you see this in whatever version number it currently is at whatever date and time that you guys are watching this then you know that you have cargo if you get an error well then you know that you don't have cargo so let's take a look at using cargo to build a project this time and previously we just wrote, or I just made a video showing you guys how to create a Hello World in Rust, and we did not use Cargo for that one, all right? Or at least I didn't use Cargo for that one. I'm going to basically do the same exact thing. I'm going to make a Hello World program in Rust, except this time I'm going to utilize Cargo to do so. So I'm over here, and I've already changed directories into my workspace where I just keep most of my code projects, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new Rust project or a new cargo project in Rust, or rather a new Rust project utilizing cargo. And I can do that by typing cargo and then new. And then you can just put the name of the project that you're going to create here. In this case, I'm just going to call it hello dash cargo. You guys can call it whatever you want. Really doesn't matter. All right. And that should be created. So now I should be able to change directories into hello dash cargo and boom and if you guys want to take a look at what that is going to look like inside of your folder or your finding system let me show you guys it in the GUI so here's the hello cargo repository or directory that I created and I didn't create any of these files cargo basically created this for me okay so you see here we have a cargo.toml file or cargo.toml and then we also have a source folder. If we go inside the source folder, we already have a main.rs or, or our main Rust file created for us already. All right, so I just went ahead and opened up this project folder in Visual Studio's code. And really quick, guys, this is what the Toml file looks like, as you guys can see. All right, so line number one at the top, the package in the brackets, that's a section heading, and that's just indicating that the following statements are configuring a package. So as you're going to add more information to this file, you're going to add other sections as well. The three lines after that, name, version, and addition, these are going to set the configuring information that Cargo is going to need to compile your program. It's telling it what name, what version, and what edition of Rust to use. And then the last line over here at the bottom on line eight, dependencies. This is the start of the area that you're going to list any of your project's dependencies. And another thing to note really quick, that inside of Rust, packages themselves, these packages of code, they're just referred to as crates, C-R-A-T-E-S, kind of like, like maybe a crate on a ship. And since we're just gonna redo the hello world, we're not really gonna need any other crates for this, okay? All right, and now, Take a look at the main.rs file. I just opened that up. No, I did not type the same exact thing before. If you create a new project in Rust, this is just going to generate for you, okay? So this was already generated for us. It basically generated us a hello world. And what also did it generate? I mean, it generated the, the toml file that I just showed you guys. And it also, you know, it generates this git ignore here, which can be nifty for you as well. But that's pretty much the difference between us building that project that we did before 
and then using Cargo to build us a project this time. Rust is always going to expect your source files to live inside of the SRC directory, and that's that's a pretty common thing. I'm sure most of you guys have probably seen that somewhere before, or have at least used it for some kind of schema or naming schema. All right, so now let's go ahead and build and then run this new Hello World program that we wrote with Cargo this time, and let's see the difference between what we did it manually last time versus now. And this time I'm not just going to use the OG terminal. I'm just going to open up a terminal in VS code and it'll already bring us right to the directory that we need. And I'm going to go ahead and type cargo build and then enter. All right. And you guys see there's some other files and folders generated over the side over here. So we've got this cargo.lock file. Now we have this target folder with all this stuff inside there. There's a debug folder inside with a plethora of folder inception inside of there. And then you got this JSON Rust info file as well. So when we ran that build command or when we ran that cargo build command, that created an executable file. And that executable file is gonna be inside of target debug hello cargo. And that's because the default build is going to be a debug build. Cargo just goes ahead and it, it shoves the binary in a directory named debug and if you want to go ahead and run that executable from the command line i'm going to go ahead and type dot slash target slash debug slash hello cargo and boom there we go hello world all right hope that was helpful for you guys smash the like subscribe whatever i'm out see ya Thank you.